what we're doing here today, I've got um, I've got a photo that I want to frame, and I'm going to have a go at making uh, a frame out of a, a slate. Um, the photo is eight by six, and these uh, slates are ten inch, so six inch off ten is going to leave me uh, four inch. So I've got like a two inch frame that I can have. Um, so. I'm going to mark that at two and a quarter or 55 mil and the same there from up this side same and then of course we're going to want two 55 mil on on each side from this way so that's uh, going to be there and then uh, an eight inch photo Take me up to uh, 255 and then, sorry, 245 and then 300 mil for the overall frame. So that'll just miss those uh, those two slate holes, nail holes we've got in the slate there. So if I square that across and then. We're marking this from the back side, and then when we tap it through uh, with a slate, we we'll can sort of dress dress the inside for us. We'll run around the edge and make it look like a, a nice a nice um, edge to the frame, natural looking. So um, I don't know if you can see that orange line there so I'm going to snip this off uh, in a minute and then we're going to have to sort of knock that through uh, to make the frame hopefully so yeah we'll get on with that so, I don't know where you've seen these before the um, slate cutters that's what they are and they're obviously for cutting through slates so it's always a good idea to put a glove on because sometimes you get these uh, little blisters when you've been doing it a bit so it just helps to uh, protect your hands a bit it might be a good idea to wear some safety goggles as well I've got glasses on anyway so I don't tend to bother myself but yeah and what we want to do is uh, the reason we mark it on the back side we need to cut from the back side uh, and when we do what it does then on the edge of the slate you can see where it's got this like a roughness it's called a dressed edge and uh, when you cut with these slate cutters cutting from the back it automatically puts that um, that dressed edge on it for you so we'll just go along the line I mean it's just like using um, a pair of scissors really if you just take your time that cut through quite nicely clever idea actually take your time when you come to the end there You see that's uh, cut nicely. But you see on the on the front side we've got like a, a dressed edge the same as the others. So the next stage we'll uh, come back and we'll start thinking how we're going to cut that hole out in the middle there. Okay. Yeah, so um, to cut the... Uh, Cut a hole out in the middle, what we're going to use there is what's known as a slate pick. Um, slaters use these when they put in roofs on, obviously that's to uh, knock the nails in. And then here we've got a little claw, that's if you need to pull any nails out or for pulling old slates up or anything like that. Gives you a bit of leverage and then on this side 
we've got a little point and we can use that in actual fact you can cut slates in the straight line but we've just used the slate cutters here which makes it a lot easier but of course when we want to cut something out in the middle uh, we can't get the slate cutters in so uh, we're going to have a go at tapping through and to do that we need to find a surface like a nice metal vise and you can sort of put your piece where your line is you just want to you just want to be on your vise and we'll just start I'm not going to demonstrate the whole of this but I'm just going to start knocking through There you are, you can see how quickly we've just knocked that bit there. And the idea is we want to continue that and, and just sort of work back to the line. Uh, and once we've done a bit, um, I think what I will do is, is knock it all out with the slate hammer, then we'll get the same finish on the front. Uh, but we could actually, another way is to make a certain size hole so that you can get the cutters in and then cut around the rest with the cutters if you want. But I'm going to opt for just knocking it all through. I don't mind doing it like this, so we'll just um, carry on doing that. And just keep it over the, over the edge of your vise. And it's quite, quite easy to do. You don't have to, you don't have to hit it hard, you know, just take your time. Bit at a time. And obviously, when we come to the line, all we're doing is just wanting to work our way along. So you can see there, I've just just got to the line there, and uh, I'm just just working me working my way self along that line, and obviously just go all the way around. And it'll probably take about half an hour to knock that all through. So uh, I'll switch the video off now and then uh, come back and show you what it looks like when we get in nearer the edge. Nearer the end row. Yeah, so I'll just show you what progress we've made there then. Been on it about five minutes now and you can see there's the original hole we started knocking through. Then I've just started going along, going all the way along that side and I'm halfway up that side there now just by making that channel. And what we find is as the slate pit goes through, the flatter side of that continues the flatness of the line. So as, as you're going along the edge of your on the edge of your vice there, you can just let that pick go through and it just automatically keeps going in a straight line but it also um, makes it nice and uh, dressed on the other side as you can see there's the other side look and they've got quite a nice effective um, dressed edge the same as we've got on that side from the, when we did it with the cutters so I'll carry on with that and I'll show you when I've got all the way round I'm just coming up, there we go, look, I'm just, saying, just coming up to the end now so yeah, I'll just finish that bit We can see that but it's come out quite nice that hasn't it so now um we've got the frame the the whole cut we'll get the uh i'm going to put a piece of perspex over that and then the picture then a bit of mdf i think on the back and seal it all around so that it's a it will be one of those frames that you can't 
sort of take the picture out and swap it uh, I'm going to look at another object another project rather that um, looks at making a frame out of slate where you can change the picture if you want to but this is a, a fixed picture so I'm going to seal it all in but I'll show you how I do that as I go along uh, but I think that's come out quite nice actually don't you give us a like if you think that's uh, good or if you want to ask me any questions always leave uh, the question in the comments and I will get back to people if uh, they want to know anything always happy to help out Yeah, so I've got a bit of, uh, it's only about 3mm I think, 2 or 3mm thick this uh, Perspex um, I'm going to cut a piece of that, um, about half inch bigger than the photo 8 by 6 is the photo so I'll cut this about 85 by 6 and a half. Um, and to cut that we just use a straight edge obviously and a standing knife really, it's what I tend to use um, so yeah, six and a half. So we'll just score that across a few times. And then it usually just uh, snaps off, eh? There we go. Up. I'll just cut down the Film on the other side. And then we just need to cut it off to eight and a half the other side. And about there. Very careful your fingers when you're doing this, obviously. There we go. Just cut down the plastic again. And there, that's that piece cut. This has obviously got the film on, so we'll pull that off just as we're going to place it on with the photo. Uh, and then we'll uh, come back and see what that's looking like. So I've just uh, taken one side of the plastic off the perspex. I've got my photo, I've put that face down and I'm just sticking it down to the perspex just with some insulation tape. Use any tape really, it won't be seen so it's just to, to hold the picture down. So that's uh, put around there all the way. Just uh, like that. And then we, uh, we've we still got the uh, plastic on that side of course. But uh, yeah, that's going to go in the frame. Hopefully kind of like that. And the plastic's removed, of course. Um, so what we'll do next, I'll cut a piece of MDF, uh, which is going to be just slightly bigger. Then it's all going to go together and then be sealed round. And uh, that should, uh, should do the job, I think. Yeah, okay, quite pleased with that. Right, so I've cut my piece of uh, MDF, just slightly bigger than all the rest of it. Um, so that's going to cover everything. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pull the plastic off the side where the photo is. And then I'm going to place that onto the frame, which I think is roughly around about right there. And then what I'm going to do is just tape it on again, similar to how we tape the photo onto the perspex. So the reason I'm going to do that, I'm just going to put the piece top and bottom first of all. 
just to make sure that I'm happy with the photo when I turn it over the other side that it's sitting in the frame right and uh, not skew with or anything like that so at least we can adjust it if need be yeah so I think I'm just going to move it over slightly and just down fractionally and then I think we'll be about right you see how I can just take that up and put it back down again quite easily without too much trouble you see that's the whole idea yeah that's looking better right so I've stuck my picture down I'm happy with that I've just placed my uh, bit of MDF on the top there and I'm just going to put some weights on it uh, just to keep it flat down and then what I want to do is seal around this edge with some black uh, sealant black silicon sealant this is gutter sealant doesn't have to be gutter sealant it's just black but um, just putting a nozzle on there yeah and when I seal around there of course it will stop any muck getting in and it's all going also going to hold the whole lot together that's the whole idea and I'll leave it to dry then overnight and uh, we'll have a look at it tomorrow see what it looks like What I'm also going to do as well is uh, get some black paint and just paint the MDF so everything will be black on the back so it won't look a mess or anything. Yeah, so I'm just uh, spitting on my finger and tidying that in there, look, smoothing it round and then uh, we'll leave it to dry overnight, get them uh, loose bits off there, look, I like chewing gum this stuff, it's uh, quite good stuff. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll leave those weights on, just let that dry overnight. In the meantime, I'll look for some, uh, I think I've got some blackboard paint actually, it dries matte and it's quite a, a good uh, paint to use on these, I've used it before. It uh, comes out quite nice. Yeah, I think that'll uh, that'll do us. Oh, we've let that uh, sealant dry, so we'll take weights off now, and should be okay. Yeah, lovely. See.
see that's uh, stuck for uh, solid now and the picture looking fine so next job I've got some of this uh, it's just blackboard paint really um, it just dries flat when it's on uh, and I'm going to just paint this MDF and round this sealant just to seal it all and give it a nice finish before I do that you could paint the whole back if you wanted but I tend to just put a board around it because you've got to be careful when you do paint to the edge it don't start running around the front so what I do I just get a bit of insulation tape and um, stick that just around the uh, around the edge of the slate there to ooh, give a nice uh, finish And it just keeps it nice and straight makes it look a bit more professional just down the each side and then across the bottom And we can just paint all of that and when we peel the tape off we'll have a nice clean line going around the picture so yeah just give you your paint a good shake it's just a water-based paint this and um, it's quite easy to uh, apply get the lid off Yeah, okay, so just an inch brush or whatever you've got. And just give that a good coat. And you see you can just go onto the tape there and over all the sealant. Although it looks um, shiny at the moment, once it's uh, more dried, it will dry matte, just like the, the slate really, almost the same colour. So we'll uh, finish that, let it dry and... Uh, Come back and have a look what it looks like. It might need a, I think I probably will give it another coat to be honest. First coat tends to uh, soak onto the MDF a bit. So uh, I think two coats would be favourable. But again, it's, it's personal preference. You're not even forced to do this stage if you don't want. Because once the picture's hung up, it's, no one's really going to see the back. Oh, it's against the wall. <clears throat> but I'm making this for somebody else so it, uh, it wants to look professional also can't see me getting any more jobs there so we'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back and have a look later on oh, I've just found uh, I was going to put uh, a hook on the back of this uh, frame to, to hang it but uh, I made one previously for the same people and um, they've decided they want it hanging with um, a string so it's a matter of making two holes in the slate and then we uh, we hang it with some garden twine what I do I've got this normal garden twine here and I take three strands about a three foot long or so and then I plait it together so while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'm just putting three pieces the same sort of length. And then what I do, tie two or three knots at one end. And then I'll show you once the frame's dry, how we go about making the hole. 
So I'm just knotting those three together. So it's got a nice knot like that. And then when that goes through the hole in the slate, that'll hang out the front. We'll take it around the other side, pull those through after it's been plaited, and then we'll knot that side after us. Otherwise, obviously, we won't get it get it through the hole. Um, so all I do is just stick a nail in the vise or a drill bit or anything. Something like that. And then we can just put that round and start plaiting it, basically. Do that, which is just one over. If you're not sure, how to do this, ask your wife, she'll probably know. So basically, you uh, you keep the middle one in there, and you just take the others over. Basically, it's all right once you get started. You can see. So, yeah, we'll get on with that. Take quite a while, so I'll switch the the camera off. But I'll show you this bit. What I've just started to do in a minute. And it it, it just makes the uh, the rope a bit thicker and it looks nicer when it's all together. So I'll get on with that. I'll switch the camera off a bit, and I'll. Show you when we've uh, when we've got it all done, and I'll show you how to uh, just make the holes in the slate, and uh, we'll get that finished. Okay, catch you later. <clears throat> right, so the paint's um, dried now. On the back there, you can probably see, and uh, I've just pulled the tape off. So it's left us that edge that we spoke about earlier. Um, yeah, we're going to um, put this string on there. I've um, made the string there look earlier and plaited that all together. So we've we've got that done now, and we've got that that knot in one end, and then the other end is left loose, so we can thread that through the holes. Now the important thing here, when we mark it from the back, we just want to make sure we get the two holes. In the top, obviously, and and not the bottom. Else, the picture is going to hang upside down. So we can look at the picture clearly. I identify that this is the top edge nearest to me, and I tend to make these holes about thirty mil in from the side and thirty mil from the top. So I'm just marking those. So now I've got my two holes there and all I'm using is a an ordinary masonry bit there. It's about a 5mm, 6mm bit there and uh, I'm just going to drill through. Just take your time with it. Go through quite easily. Do the other one. And just 
soak that dust away. The old Hoover. And there we've got two clean holes so we can uh, put that cord through there in a moment. So all we need to do is just pick one of the holes and thread the cord through that one and just pull it through and we've got the, uh, the knot there and then push it back through this one and once we've done that we can then knot this end the same. In actual fact, we want to sort of, before we knot it, think how much we want hanging. Um, so I think something probably about like that looks about right to me. So we need that knot in this piece of rope to be round about there. Then we'll just cut the access off and make both the tassels the same sort of length. And that's really all we've got to do with that. If I pull that through now, you see we've got we've got that, and that can hang like that. At the moment, I've got those longish tassels. I'm gonna just cut those off. The Stanley blade, probably to about um, inch, inch and a half, something like that. And the same with these. And then we can just uh, undo the plat there. And then that will just hang on the uh, on the wall like so. So I think yeah, it looks quite effective. That I don't know what you think, uh, but it's a nice little project to attempt. And I think next time I might look at making one where we can actually take the picture out if we do decide we want to change it and, um, you know, put a different picture in. So, yeah. OK, thanks a lot for watching. There we are then. And what do you think?